<laughs> well, Kyle's not ready now that his mouth's full. Wow. Those breadsticks, man. <laughs> it's Tuesday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, Welcome to Murder Hobo. Our stab at a talk show uh, between the rolls. Between uh, the choose. Tonight, it's Sausage Fest night. <laughs> As uh, we three are going to discuss fighters because men are men and men fight. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and do a recap on <laughs> Turn Off With Your Teeth. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a recap of the two shows we had this week so welcome aboard thanks for following us uh if you aren't follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to buy our cool stuff uh the link is there somewhere tinyurl dot i don't know rpg swag tinyurl.com <laughs> rpg swag if you want to join us in chat uh tinyurl.com m hobo inc discord uh if you want to seat here uh either on the talk show or on one of our two one shots this week uh let us know uh twitter or gmail m hobo inc we aren't very original but we're very specific uh tonight we're a little bit short staffed because carol got tired of us always talking over her hates our guts and has announced her retirement from this i'm being told she is not retired she's not mad well she's probably mad at us but yeah she'll be here this week <laughs> <laughs> now now i'm gonna get an email jesus <laughs> you're gonna get several <laughs> but anyway uh we've got two one shots scheduled for later this week one on thursday 8 p.m eastern standard time and one on saturday 8 p.m eastern standard time we're very rigid nazi-esque Only we're not good bad shit if we're not good, we're consistent. Oh, I don't have my green screen up. Come on. You can't That's right. Ah, oh, no green screen. Uh, let's introduce the cast. Uh, if you've seen the show before, you know these guys. If you haven't seen the show before, welcome aboard. David, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm David, and I'm a murder hobo. And, uh, yeah, I'm also... Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We'll start out with 12-step program <laughs> For D and D, um, no, I'm a content writer. Um, you know, still work developing stuff. So, and that's about it. And coming? then I hang out with these guys online. So, yeah, I agree with Kyle. When's that adventure coming out? I'm getting tired it's writing. It's going to be a while. <laughs> it's going to be a while. Jot it in a book and then completely forget about it and run something. That's right. Go, mm -hmm. oh, there was supposed to be a Minotaur in this one. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Playtesting? What's playtesting? <laughs> Playtesting's for rookies. That's, a, that's a pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You want to playtest? Bring it on here. You can playtest it here. Yeah, we'll our, just stream it. <laughs> our other panelist is Kyle. Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Kyle. I am, I think, the second most frequent DM now on uh, the Murder Hobos Inc. So yep. suck at everyone else. <laughs> I'm still first best. Yeah. And a master of English. Master Apparently. Of English. <laughs> I speak that English real good there, Frank, don't you know? Oh my God. Uh, uh, Folks, we had the uh, pleasure, the distinct honor, uh, actually, of presenting to you episode 100. While some may say it happened last week, others say it happened this week, nobody's really quite sure, blah, 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 blah. Let's go ahead and do a discussion on uh, episode 100, Rock of Ages. David played, uh, Kyle was absent. Uh, David, give us your impression of Rich Little. I mean, of Rock of Ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rock of Ages was uh, our 100th episode, and it was it was one not to miss. <laughs> so, uh, notice he's not saying it was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of tap dancing around. No, really, it was good. It's one of probably one of our funnier episodes, I, I would imagine. So that's because you were in it. Come on, that's why. Hey, the cacophony episodes are great. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Rock of Ages starts with our intrepid adventurers from the Adventurers Guild taking a job uh, escorting a package 
to be delivered uh, from a ship called the Sugar Glider. And uh, as we make our way to the docks, there's just mayhem all over the docks. There's crowds uh, of uh, people all over the docks, not social distancing, and, <laughs> and ships in the harbor waiting to come in. And we ask where the sugar glider is, and it's, it's just like it's probably way out there <laughs> waiting to come in. So uh, I played my character, Zadar, the, the changeling uh, arcane trickster. and. Um, yeah, he uh, assumed uh, a persona that night uh, of a uh, performer from the early 90s. <laughs> and he went by the name of Ice. So anyway, hilarity ensued. Uh, I end up running into a little, uh, little scholarly fellow by the name of... Mortimer J. Sneed, instructor from the Grand Academy. He was in cacophony on sabbatical doing a little bit of research. Oh, yeah. In so, case you missed it, that was Mortimer J. Sneed. In case. From the Grand Academy. <laughs> he was on sabbatical in cacophony. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I uh, run into him. He drops his stuff all over the the place I uh, managed to pilfer one of his scrolls, thinking that oh, well, it's you know probably some important Dumbass. spell scroll. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we find out uh, that our ship is way in the dock. So we decide to try to uh, wait it out in a tavern. So as we're making our way there, uh, my partner, my Corona. <laughs> Uh, wanted to get her drink on with uh, one of the the dock master, but unfortunately, <laughs> sorry, Corona. Yeah, he turned her down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we end up running into Mortimer J. Steed, instructor at the Grand Academy in Cacophony on sabbatical. Grab my ass! No, that was the halfling that grabbed the, the producer's ass. Really? Yeah. Uh, really? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, as that ensued, uh, that, that little scenario, um, we decided we would help Mortimer J. Sneed out. And, um, Instructor, Grand Academy, on sabbatical, in yeah, cacophony. Just in case I've forgotten. <laughs> Wait, uh, do you mean the Mortimer J. Sneed? The Mo Mortimer Yes. Sneed. Yes. He He's an instructor at the Grand Academy. Grand Academy? Yes. Yeah. Where they, make sabbatical. <laughs> where they make heroes, obviously. And you'll find out, literally. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so we decide to assist Mortimer J. Sneed. Uh, he's looking for something called the Rock of Ages. He swears that it's somewhere along the dock or whatever. So uh, as we figure out where it is and discover it is this, like, rock indentation in the dock area uh he sets up a, a little contraption of course you know uh my and i are a little trepidatious about setting this up so we, we help him set up his his little contraption he activates it and boom one million bc so <laughs> we get time traveled folks and we know how people love time travel episodes oh well oh, oh now now what what exactly, what age did you try and travel to? Yeah, Frank, what age did we try and travel to? <laughs> year 100 to celebrate episode 100. The year 100, yeah. so I might call it like a stone age, huh? Where'd you come up with that idea? Oh, yeah. Uh, that idea was actually courtesy of Kyle. So Scott, <laughs> drink. Kyle came up with another good idea. Although, didn't somebody tell you to do that? No. Okay. That, well, I mean, I said, hey, oh, 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 hang on a second. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, let me correct. Okay. I said, let's do a Stone Age one. And they were like, Kyle, you're such an amazing DM. You should write it. Yes, you should I, have. <laughs> I really should, and I will. But Frank writes them faster because he. He craps the them band. out. <laughs> he craps them out like raisins. All yeah. my adventures are raisins, and I crap them out. Yeah. Mm -mm. He just plucks them and just throws them everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man. So we're in year 100, obviously. So, uh, yes. Uh, uh, let's see. My Corona, 
uh, Zadar and uh, what was Carol's character's name again? I couldn't remember. She was the swashbuckler called. Great, that's another email I'm going to get. You're going to get another one. <laughs> there, you were getting three already. Anyway, yeah. Carol was with us <laughs> as a swashbuckler that day. Uh, we meet up with a bunch of, uh, uh, I guess we would say gatherers. The hunters were uh, were elsewhere. Uh, one of the the, uh, I don't I don't want to call them primitives, but I guess they were. That's uh, not racist. The, Mm -mm, not at all. Uh, these people from this time era. Anyway, <laughs> uh, shortly after we we arrived, we we meet them. Of course, they're a little skittish about meeting us. And Mortimer J. Sneeze introduces himself to the chieftain. But just as he does that, one of the one of the uh, well, hang, hang on a second. Who did it? Mortimer J. Sneeze. Is he the guy from the Grand Academy currently on sabbatical in Cacophony? Professor. Just checking. Yes. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, Mortimer J. Sneed, as in Sneed J. Mortimer. Mortimer. Yes. Mortimer J. Sneed. That would be yeah, the legal Academy. rendition. Yes. I, I, believe, I believe he was on sabbatical. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you train heroes like that all the time, you need a sabbatical every I believe he do. does instruct heroes. At the Academy? Yeah. The Grand Academy. The Grand Academy. <laughs> Where he is currently on sabbatical. I'm never going to get through this episode. <laughs> yes. Folks, that was pretty much how episode 100 went. If they spoke with him, he went ape shit on his name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, scholarly fellow. <laughs> one of the tribes, folks, gets uh, snatched up by uh, a pterodax type uh, yeah. creature. <laughs> and of course, your intrepid uh, adventurers go and pursue it. Uh, I believe my Corona showed the least amount of happiness. Yeah, she she wasn't into it at all. <laughs> she was just like, screw it. No, we're not going after him. But uh, we do. So uh, we ended up in an encounter with uh, um, a bunch of them as we walked into a valley trying to track uh, <coughs> uh, where the the creature absconded with the the tribal person. Anyway, um, yeah, I know racist native, native. <laughs> caveman. Hey, so anyway, the cave person, the Geico commercial guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have our encounter uh, with uh, smaller uh, creatures, and uh, we fight our way through that. Uh, we finally uh, breach the other side of the valley where we run into some uh, hunters that are uh, dressed in skunk-like, uh, you know, pinstripe, you know, uh, skins. So skunk skins or something. So if you saw our first episode, you'll know what we're talking about <laughs> because this the is whole episode be... stunk. <laughs> oh man, it wasn't that bad. So it wasn't and, good. And like I said, that was episode 101. 100 was the one just before that, starring me. Ah. I don't actually know. Uh, I don't actually know what shows were what. So mm -mm. if you aren't in it, you don't watch it. <laughs> That's true. No, I think maybe I DM'd that one now that I think about it. Was that the you Baker? You DM'd that one. That was oh, the Baker. Anyway, <laughs> we confronted these hunters. And uh, yeah, uh, to kind of uh, throw them off uh, a little bit off their game, Zadar shapeshifts. Yes. So uh, what happened with on? Mortimer J. Sneed while all this was going on? The instructor for the yeah. Grand Academy? The one on sabbatical, yeah. It was on sabbatical? Who knows? I... <laughs> As our producer said, he was getting laid. Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, while well, Mortimer was doing that, obviously, Ooh. Jay Sneed. There you go. Yeah. Of the Grand Academy. Yeah. Who's on sabbatical? In <laughs> cacophony. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so to kind of um, 
put the hunters at a disadvantage, Sadar suddenly becomes Raquel Welch from 1 million BC. <laughs> Fur bikini and everything. In case you, you didn't know, Zadar is a pretty gender fluid, uh, you know, shapeshifter. So. Oh, he shifted shape that day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, well, you know, a couple, a couple of them got confrontational. One got amorous and tried to use the caveman method to, to bed me. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, initiative ensued in a, in a fight. Uh, we, we came out on top with that fight. And uh, suddenly we confronted the pterodactyl-like creature. Giant. Almost killed all of us. Yeah. So one hit point, three hit, hit points, point. and eleven mm -hmm. hit points. Yes. And Almost during the battle decayed. and during the battle, a goblinoid type creature showed up. Apparently uh claiming uh the Teradex uh corpse as its own. Uh yeah. So was there a chant associated with that goblin? There was a chant associated with that goblin. Uh the goblin was chanting Udu, Udu, Udu. <laughs> I missed it. Come yes, on. You, you did, missed Kyle. it. I put Mama Udu's great, 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 great relative in there. Hey. Who realized that that probably was Mama Udu herself? <laughs> <laughs> As well, a middle-aged person. <laughs> yeah. They were impressed by our, our martial prowess and uh, uh, sure. left, the, left, the, <laughs> left the spear for us. And, you know, Zadar takes it as, uh, you know, symbol of respect from, from the goblin. Peace. Anyway, so we head on back. Uh, Mortimer J. Sneed, yeah, comes out of the cave. An instructor obviously. from the Grand Academy. He's on sabbatical. Yes. Trains those heroes. See, <laughs> Kyle wasn't even there, and he already knows the drill on this guy. <laughs> Apparently, a busy uh, got busy with the, the the elder of the tribe, and uh, discovers that uh, they were able to make the the Rock of Ages appear in uh, in the ground. This is how it all started, folks. And then he sets up the time travel device, and boom, we're back in, in uh, cacophony. And quickly, my producer, my, yeah, wanted to kill him. So <laughs> kill him or kick him in the balls or something. <laughs> I think she wanted to kill him by kicking him in the <laughs> balls. <laughs> Death by Munga. Yes. But, it, but you saw a lot of weirdness on the docks after that. Oh yeah, we did. And then our ship came in, literally. So <laughs> anyway, we got paid, but still it wasn't enough. And um yeah, and that was the episode, folks. Believe me, it was a lot funnier than the way I told it. You know, I, I think you guys are missing the big picture on that episode. I don't think so much that it was a you got paid or you survived. I think it was more of a you helped write history. With Mortimer J. Sneed of the Grand Academy, Academy. He's currently on sabbatical in cacophony from training heroes. We did. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that show is in the archive. I think it's still on Twitch, maybe. I'm not sure. It's definitely in our archive, folks. Watch it. It was pretty funny, uh, despite the producer not liking time travel. Uh, at least I didn't put Doc or Marty in there. So, yeah. well, anyway. by the end, I that mean, it became, it, it, came, it became obvious Mortimer seated the gene pool. So, <laughs> a lot of Mortimer like people in cacophony. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a there was a dominant gene passed on in the past. <laughs> You're welcome, history <laughs> lovers. <laughs> uh that was episode 100 rock of ages uh catch it in it. the archive uh episode 101 was the campaign scenario uh featuring among others kyle uh kyle why don't you go ahead and give a recap of uh the shenanigans you campaigners got into this weekend uh well we finished off what we were uh doing the last time which was splitting the group letting the weak <sighs> pathetic members rest 
because they're weak and pathetic and they need to do that. While the strong, clever, intelligent, handsome, good looking members decided to figure out. And what... you. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, yeah, whoa. Why? Oh. Why? <laughs> Gotta stick up for Blake, man. I have the better eyelashes than Blake. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> wow. and we can prove it as soon as we all get back together in person. I hate this. Show. Anyway, <laughs> so Blake and I, Dewey and Perpetua, uh, uh, went off to discover where the skeletons had come from, what had happened, and we discovered that we were not alone in the uh, uh, temple as far as living creatures were concerned. Uh, the other part of the group got scared from a floating ball of dust mites and to, 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 the, to, the, to the, the noise of the thing that they see later when it comes up, Frank. <laughs> oh, it was a noise. Oh, come on for the... No. You'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> wah, 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 That's wah, it. Wah, wah. <laughs> the droid from the inner empire folks <laughs> or joe swanson <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry didn't mean to interrupt no, no, right ahead. Fine. uh mortimer j sneed was not there uh <laughs> trainer of heroes from the grand academy these specific heroes in fact he was, he, was in the, he was in cacophony at the time i believe yeah, on Although there could be some kind of time travel between Mortimer J. Sneed and what? you guys. What? Maybe they met a young Mortimer J. Sneed while you got trained by the elder. <laughs> Welcome to the Murder Hobo Zone. You already did that episode. <laughs> yeah, you, and you screwed it up. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> It depends on which intro you prefer. I went with the one that I liked more. It was anyway. a great intro. Anyway. Anyway. So the party ended up getting back together because they were all scared. Retreating. Uh, found out that the uh, knoll that had been alive in the temple may now be a pile of guts thanks to some misunderstandings between Frank and the party and a guardian of fate. Um... Four thingies happened. I think we got most of those. Uh, uh, and then the party stayed together most of the time because most of the scouting had been done. And since we had discovered most of the dangers, it was time to sally forth and find what we need. And we did that in the armory where we fought some dead beholder thing and learned that enervation and eversization are two different things. Not the same thing. Both words that I can't pronounce. Um, but we managed to find bits and pieces, magical items that aren't helpful to anyone in any way, shape, or form. And <laughs> that was pretty much it. Uh, we didn't find the rod of Babel. We didn't find Babel's rod. The one that was bifurcated. Thrifurcated? Thrifurcated. Because it was three, three, right? Thrifurcated. Thrifurcated. Okay. Thrice bifurcate or thrice bifurcate. <laughs> That's a lot of bifurcation. That's a lot man. of bifurcation, folks. One, <clears throat> two. Yeah, I think two you end up with six. <laughs> oh wait, um, no, no. One, two. You would end up with four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's only a rod of three parts. Yeah. We're definitely. on a budget at Murder Hobo Inc. We can't do seven parts. That's just too expensive. So we had to You know what? Three. I saw Frozen 2 for the first time, and they had the spirits of earth, wind, fire, and water. And I love their performance on Soul out. Train. <laughs> Black balls. Anyway. Um, so the party ends up with magical items, a secret compartment, and a rod to find. Hmm. I don't know what else happened, honestly. I, I really shouldn't be on the show discussing what happens in the campaign. <laughs> yeah, because all you did was play in it. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I think you covered it pretty well. You did mm -hmm. miss the fact that something was crawling along the ceiling. Uh, you, well, that was the knoll, you, wasn't it? Yeah, you glossed over that, though. I thought that was... That, that one seemed to stump them. Well, okay. The, what we thought was a bifurcated 
split open knoll at the Guardian of Faith. We're not quite sure it is because we didn't find any boots or rings of spider climb, which we know that this specific knoll had been using. So we're still a little bit cautious on whether we actually managed to solve all the storylines up. Oh, uh, you didn't solve any storylines. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, gotta... that's what it's like being in a campaign. You just make more problems every episode. Yeah, I, I, anything. I, you know what? I was looking at my notes and I wrote it for episode 90. Um, we just did episode 101. So I haven't written shit on the campaign <laughs> in like two weeks. So <laughs> no. that that's the joy of a campaign. You just, especially with the milestone folks, you write down what they need to accomplish. And in this case, uh, you sit back, you wait about a month, and then they go, oh, oh, yes, you did finally figure out what the fuck I wanted you to go do, and uh, now you've done it. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, the campaign, if you haven't seen it, uh, all the episodes are on the archive. Um, it is, shall we say, convoluted, uh, but they're getting there. They're, they're, they're getting there. They're getting mm-hmm. there. Uh, we'll see how they do. Uh, but... Uh, a lot of fighting, both scenarios, and that will bring us to our main topic, uh, which is not scripted. Uh, tanks. Uh, you know, when you play D&D, you've got a plethora of characters you can choose from. Uh, you can go from the exotic to the mundane, and one of the most mundane characters is the old standby, the old shoe, the old boot, Mr. True, uh, the fighter. Uh, they aren't very glamorous, or are they? Uh, but they're, they've are they been here since the beginning, and they're going to be here long after we're done playing. Uh, so with the advent of 5e, uh, they have given, shall we say, more credence to every single class by giving them different options. Uh, in the olden days, when you would reach different levels, you would gain a different title, um, which was cool and absolutely useless uh, because it didn't come with any special cool neato things. Uh, 5e changed all that for better or worse and now you have a bunch of different variants and I'm not talking rangers or paladins. Uh, We're talking within the fighter class you have different uh, ideals or uh, methodology that you can go through and that's what we're going to go ahead and discuss tonight. We'll do this. We're going to try and do all of the classes so that our panel, who is far smarter than me on uh, how to play, uh, can go ahead and explain the various nuances of the different classes. Tonight, it's the tank. Uh, So fighters, we'll go ahead and start with David. Uh, David, when you play D&D, what's your first opinion of a fighter? Well, when I first started playing D&D, I really didn't think fighter was all that interesting. You know, I I was drawn to the spellcasters. And um, it wasn't until I started playing again that a friend of mine suggested that I try the fighter. Um, You know, because, I mean, I hadn't started playing D&D until, you know, about a year and a half ago or a little over a year and a half ago. And I was still pretty new at it. And right away, I jumped into like one of the harder classes. I mean, I didn't go wizard, but I went just as bad. I went warlock. So, no, mechanically not as tough, but still, I mean, you only get two spell slots. So, you know, but, uh, you know, that was a learning curve. And then, um, you know, I started rolling other characters and my friend, uh, when I was getting ready to come on the show, she was just like, well, try to fighter class uh, or classes, you know, fighter, barbarian, you know, paladin. So the first one that I tried was fighter and I created uh, a character. We took him up to level three. We did a couple of Frank's, uh, you know, kind of 1v1 uh, adventures and I fell in love with it. I, I loved it. I mean, the simplicity of a fighter, uh, like a champion fighter, which is like like uh, the first subclass, it, it's pretty simplistic, but it is incredibly powerful, um, especially with some of the things that you get, some of its abilities like second wind, 
Uh, you have uh, different fighting styles that you can pick. And I mean, if, if you, if you choose wisely, you can have a, a pretty strong character. Uh, the episode that I did with Kyle, he let our characters go to level 16. And I mean, if it, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'll, just for uh, uh, everyone's sake, let uh, everyone got to level 16. Uh, and when I was designing my encounters and thinking, well, is this going to be too much? I thought to myself, David's playing a fighter. What's the worst scenario I can imagine? Can a fighter handle this? And it was like, yeah, a fighter straight on is going to be able to take this way half down to health if he directs his attention at it. I I love it there. He never got the opportunity to, which is why that ended up being a lot longer than what I was. But uh, 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 between uh, your wizard and your fighter, those are generally when I decide whether something is going to be too tough for a party i'm like what would a wizard do what would a fighter do and if they're capable of handling it either one separately then it'll be fine for the party and so knowing you were playing a fighter i was like yeah what's the worst david could throw at me <laughs> everything <laughs> Nothing. It, no. it, uh, it turned out to be nothing because his wisdom <laughs> and intelligence score was so low that he got locked down by madness. Yeah. So insanity just froze him, paralyzed him, and that sucked. Uh, every every I round, so bad. Intelligence Honest, check. <laughs> Caitlin forgot her spells. Uh, Carol forgot her spells. I didn't care about that. That's them forgetting it. I. I really screwed over David on that one, and I feel bad for it because when you play a high-level fighter, you had a chance to attack me, and you said, yeah. "Fuck it, I'm going for Carol." <laughs> you weren't gonna mess with the fighter. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But anyway, I mean, very strong class. I was playing a champion fighter, sword and board. I mean, my AC was through the roof and then uh i mean it was it was a pretty tanky tank and uh the 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 race that i had chose i chose the shifter race beast tide and i mean when you know i shift i mean i just shot up like <laughs> 21 temporary hit points on top of everything else i think uh i think uh one with the uh temporary hit points my hit points shot up to like 201 or something like that. So wow. yeah, yeah, it was it was nuts. So, but you know, if I hadn't got locked down, it would have been a hell of a lot more interesting. But but I mean, aside that, the fighter is a great class. There's so many subclasses now. It it's you know it's unreal. Um, you can uh, one of the things that I would like to try on a fighter though is do a dex build and um try try an archery uh fighting style and see how that goes especially with second wind and multiple attacks and stuff like that that could be pretty devastating you could lock something down from range pretty That's much true. so kyle same question to you uh what's the first thing you think of when you think of the lowly fighter when i think of the lowly fighter i uh like david when i first started i went I went full wizard because I didn't, you know, I didn't <laughs> shit. Uh, okay. And I've been playing magic classes ever since until recently this past year where I've been playing fighter classes mainly. Uh, the Barbarian is probably the only uh, character right now that I play that isn't a fighter. Um, and uh, a lot of the reasons for that is I really skipped out over it going on early. And uh, uh, there is an a, um, amazing design with just your simple fighter. And I mean, uh, Frank, the first thing was your theory of a tank. And yeah, a fighter is a tank, but there's so much more than that too. And um, honestly, I have to say they're probably one of the better classes to um, be a beginner as. Um, because they're, uh, I'd say they're more customizable than the Warlock or the Artificer class, which we'll talk about 
another episode. And, you know, whatever you want to design with either of those classes, you can make. But with a fighter, basically mundane, it simplifies everything for you. <clears throat> and it's as complicated as you want to make it. If you want to be the sword and board fighter all the way through, who's just really good at fighting, um, you play a champion and you just hit the lever loving shit out of it if you want that's be, right <laughs> if you want to be the amazing sword master zoro or um whatever that one piece character is who fights with seven blades uh, you can't do the seven blades part uh but you come pretty damn close with um with like say a samurai or something like that um and they're just the underdogs, and uh, they win the hockey Stanley Cup every single time. I what's that against the Russian thing? The U.S. team against the Russians? Miracle, miracle yeah. on ice. They are the miracle on ice of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I mean, did, that was a weird crossover. <laughs> That was a weird cross. But he took us there and brought <laughs> he, us right he back. He took us there. I, I followed it. I just And I'm not taking one. you back, guys. <laughs> now no, we got to find uh, Mortimer J. Class. Sneed. You roll really well. You get uh, uh, to play a fighter, and you get to pick feats uh, every two levels, it seems like. <laughs> uh, if you roll poorly, you get to add ability score increases every two levels. That's what I did. <laughs> you really shore up your character. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, they're absolutely everything. They're a tank. They're the damage dealer. Uh, if you want to play Gandalf the wizard, uh, don't play a wizard. Play an Eldritch Knight. Let's be honest. Gandalf didn't really cast that much magic, but he beat the ever-loving shit out of things with a quarter staff and a long sword. Um... <laughs> Yeah, no. Fighters yeah. are amazing. Yeah. And you're missing out if you intentionally say they're too boring for you. <laughs> uh, for me, just my two cents, uh, if you're just starting in D&D, I highly recommend a fighter because I, clearly at the early stages, they are very simplistic. You're there to smash and bash. Not a whole lot of dancing around stuff. Not a whole lot of, do I have this spell memorized? How am I supposed to do this? Uh, you aren't a charming individual like a bard. Uh, you certainly don't have the calculus and trigonometry strain of a monk. Uh, a fighter for me is always a first grab uh, for new players because they're easy to go ahead and wrap yourselves around. Grog, get weapon, grog, hit, bad guy. Uh, and I, I really like it. And as we all know, uh, Head Wound Larry, personal favorite because I don't get to play that often, but when I do, uh, I like Dos Equis, So, uh, <laughs> but I, I like using the fighter uh, as the tank mentality. Uh, back in the old days, they were easy to play, yada, 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 and it stuck with me forever. Plus, uh, I, I, I'd i rather hit people than deal with them. I really would, <laughs> and that... That covers the breadth of my personality problems. Uh, but a fighter is good for your first time person because they're easy to pick up on. So I really like them. Uh, but as we stated before, and as what Kyle has alluded to with his Eldridge Knight comment is, you have several different variants on your standard fighter as you grow in levels. Uh, you've got the champion. Uh, which uh, David and Kyle both covered. You have the Battle Master, which one of them covered, uh, kind well, of. Neither of us covered. This is your specialty down and dirty fighter, your gladiator style fighter. Uh, honestly, before Xanathar's came out, I was like, well, if I want to play a Cavalier, I'm going to play a Battle Master halfling on a dog, and then I can use all those tricky maneuvers to really screw people over. But and the DM. <laughs> and the DM. I never did, but I will next time. Uh, I think you did screw me over on one of them. You were riding a dog or something and ran up a wall? I think it was a cat. A panther. Okay. And I was a, a ranger at that one. But uh, we're not talking about rangers. We're talking about fighters. But speaking of riding animals, you have the cavalier, Frank. Tell us about that. 
the Cavalier is a throwback from the old uh, unearthed arcana from 2E. If you think about chivalrous knights uh, mounted on horseback and specialists uh, for mounted combat, that's pretty much what you're getting with Cavalier. Well, uh, now they did do some extra things to make sure that you didn't need a mount all the time. Turns correct. out horses trip in dungeons and break their necks all the time. I think that's, that's not a, no, that's about. not against you, Frank. You have them eaten by owl bears outside. <laughs> <laughs> or Mouse set on never fire. get to the dungeon with you, Frank. A horse uh, on fire. Oh my god. Just the tail <laughs> part. That's already. Uh, oh, but yes, uh, yeah. cavaliers uh, have a variety of attack methods that they can, uh, and I always go back to the uh, standard. They're knights on horseback, uh, but they are much more as all fighters are anymore. Uh, one of the things uh, I always liked was, as Kyle pointed out, the Eldritch Knight, because uh, if you can cut the shit out of people and cast spells, eh, yeah, that's... you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so what do you guys think of the Eldritch Knight? We'll start with Kyle on this one. Uh, like I said, this is if I want to play Gandalf, I'm playing an Eldritch Knight or uh, uh, the wonderful Gish. I'm playing an Eldritch Knight mixed with a uh, wizard, but we're, we'll, we'll do multi-classing later or something like that. Um, no, but by far, probably one of your more powerful casters because it combines um, the... What's the thing that lets you take another action? Action Surge. Surge. Yes. Yeah. So this is your one and only character who can cast two spells in one turn, provided they burn an Action Surge. So if you've ever wanted to shoot a fireball twice, this is how you do it. You have to be patient <laughs> for it, but this is it. And when it does, oh, it's sweet. <laughs> burn everything. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fighter with a fireball. Yeah, it's that's pretty vicious. <laughs> nice. David, what do you think of the Eldritch Knight? Uh, I like it. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, try to do the comparison of the Eldritch, Eldritch Knight with uh, what's in the uh, Sword Coast uh, guide, uh, the Blade Singer for for the the elf uh, race, and a lot of people tend to go uh, prefer Eldritch Knight over over that. I mean, they go back and forth on it. I mean, there, there are pluses to both, but... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. People who play D&D argue about shit like that? Yeah, okay. When did this start? <laughs> <laughs> so, you your neck beard to yourself, sir. Yes. As you were saying, David. No, no, but, uh, you know, the Eldritch Knight, I mean, does have its lim limitations. I think, what, you can only go up to level five with spells, I believe? Four. I four. think it's four. Yeah. And yeah. you get those at the end game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you, you've you got a plethora of spells to choose from. I mean, do, or do they give you two schools that you have to choose from? You have to choose from two schools, but eventually, if you make it to level 20, you can choose four different spells from four other schools. <laughs> that's it. But still, I mean, that, that's pretty powerful in a fighter's hands. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you can hack something and then turn around, action surge, and then fire fire a spell i mean yeah it's pretty powerful so. i mean if we go back to frank's definition of a tank the tank is a meaty character who can either take the hit or can block the hit high ic or high health uh and then the other thing that they have to be is delivering uh, a the threat hit to the rest of the party and <laughs> <laughs> casting fireball twice in a turn and then cutting down somebody or just turning invisible and just slicing through a wave of enemies. That's your way of being a threat that is as terrifying as a wizard with a wish spell. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, and that brings us to the last one. Uh, it is in the uh, UA Arata version. It is the psychic warrior, or I like to refer to him as Darth Vader because uh, with 
D and D fifth edition being so old, uh, it seems as though they are trying to scratch and claw at whatever they can to go ahead and sell more items. So let's bring back Sonics, Psionics, Mental Powers, whatever you want to call. Uh, have either one of you studied the Psychic Warrior edition? I was looking into it. Uh, what did you think? Revised it. Did you look at the revised edition? Or did I you did. Look at the- okay. I- I, I looked at the original and I looked at the revised edition. Uh, with the revised edition, they're going uh, with this point system. So uh, to fuel your psi abilities, it's kind of like the sorcerer, but you got dice rolls instead of points. And uh, you use those dice rolls to fuel your different abilities. I mean, and I mean, you're, you're literally a, a Jedi. Uh, pretty much with with this, and especially when you get a higher level telekinesis, uh, you know, push pull, you know, I mean, bend things to your will. I mean, you know, I mean, the yeah, you know, the options are limitless, limitless with it. Do you like it? I think it's a little complicated. So I mean, this That's is something. This is something to use in a very. Um, I don't know, probably a uh, more controlled campaign or something like that. It's definitely not for a novice player. This is, this is, this, it, this would be an advanced player's uh, a chance to, to shine with that. So. But. Al, what's your take on it? Um, I, I don't care for psionics yet. So uh, if they ever were uh, this latest update, I do like a little bit more. Even with the uh, weird complications of their psionic die that goes up and it goes down, um, and honestly, there's less confusing uh, fighters to play. Um, just to rattle off a few more that we did skip over, uh, you have your arcane archer, uh, another elf only subclass. You got your. Sucks. <laughs> I mean, you're the DM, guys. Wave it or just talk to your team. Like. <laughs> I don't want to. I want to be a gnome crossbowman who uses arcane bolts. <laughs> if they don't say yes, it's probably Frank, and you should find another DM. <laughs> uh, find the game that you enjoy, whether it's with me or, huh, well, Kyle. I guess you could add him to that list, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah, I say no to the psionics if you ever want to play in my game. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to keep going new stuff came out you have your echo night mm-hmm. which is uh uh if you ever wanted to have a friend who lived in the past that would be your echo night there uh, uh, time travel friend essentially yeah and what, and what book was that kyle that was the explorer's guide to wild mount yeah. where they add a few more wizard spells and then your more complicated uh fighter who can do that uh you also have your purple dragon knight or your banneret who is the team fighter whenever they use their basic fighting fighter skills they help other people uh and then finally your samurai who i think we briefly mentioned but who is by far one of my personal favorite high level fighters to play because when you finally get knocked down you get to interrupt whatever was killing you and then kill it <laughs> before you die oh come on it's fun (laughs) 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 don't fall on your own sword (laughs) okay bill (laughs) oh no no he walked off yeah for five steps six steps uh, I got to go with Kyle on this one. Uh, make sure that you check with your DM before you introduce new characters. We here at Murder Hobo Inc., we really don't care because these are all one shots for the most part. So we like to try them out. A lot of the players will say, hey, I want to try this. And I, I really have no problem with it. I won't like it as a PC, but you know, the game's for everybody. Uh, so if you're thinking about trying one of these weird ones, uh, just check with your DM, make sure that they're like, okay, because uh, like me, uh, as Kyle is fond of pointing out, I don't know the rules that well. Uh, and I don't because I 
I am living in 1980 and the world is great and there's no COVID and uh, there's just, uh, you can be an elf and that's a fucking class. So, you know, that's something special. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> the, the Sonics, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, as well as the opinion of Mortimer J. Sneed, fuck Sonics. Uh, that is just a stupid... Whoa, whoa, that, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that the same Mortimer J. Sneed who teaches at the Grand Academy? I, I believe, believe so. But I, I, I think he is on sabbatical, though, but I'm not sure where. In in cacophony? Yeah, it could be cacophony. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, the, the Sonics, to me, uh, in the early days, they also released a product called Gamma World, which was uh, post-apocalyptic, blah, 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 a lot of problems there. Leave the mind control bullshit there. It has no place in medieval uh, mantra, in my opinion. That being said, of course, uh, spells like suggestion come in, guys, or dominate creature. As, and as Eric Hall, Justice Man says, masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> Command word. We're going to work. Uh, so, uh, in the time we have left, let's go ahead and point out a few of the really cool things. Uh, the things that you guys like about the lowly but powerful fighter. Uh, I think we started with David, so we'll start with Kyle. Kyle, what do you think? Uh, what's the coolest feat or ability out of any of the tropes that we've listed? What do you like the most? Well, um, like I said, just has to be hands down their versatility. Um, I mean, they get all the cool skills, but... This is if you're new to D and D and you saw Kill Bill, and you want to have a sword swearing air fighter, you can have that. It doesn't even matter which subclass you choose. At the end of the day, you can still be Kill Bill from Kill Bill, uh, and be fighting with a sword gunslinger. We didn't even talk about gunslinger at all. It wasn't you know why we approach it. You know <laughs> why we don't talk about a gunslinger? Because there are no fucking guns in D and D. I don't give a shit how many times they're written in books. What about a musket? Or a blumberbuss? <laughs> uh, uh, artificer, force cannons. Why not like a little force a cannon? A little pet. A Solaro. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I've disappointed Frank. He'll probably be sober for several months now until I now, now I'll have come to up drink. with an idea. <laughs> now, I, now I know what Scott feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, no, you can have an image of what your character, what you want it to do, and you can build that character with a fighter. It doesn't even matter how outlandish chances are uh, a fighter can cover it in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your, what's your favorite ability feet? Otherwise feet. out of any of the fighter class, I don't care which one, what's the thing that you like the most that, Oh, this fighter can do this uh again i'm gonna go back to the samurai um they have the ability to focus give themselves more health and then just swing with reckless abandon and that's and a barbarian so, huh <laughs> that's a barbarian yeah well <laughs> shut up frank yeah it, <laughs> it really is the barbarian of fighters but i mean you know when you have the level 20 samurai fighter who is a great weapon master with a maul dwarf who then takes advantage, swings, great master. I literally have to have a spreadsheet when I play this character to be like, okay, I hit seven of the eight times I was swinging. That's that much damage. And then I have to roll this many die. Gah! Kyle just likes throwing every die that he throws really on the do. table. But then the fact that, you know, if that didn't kill the monster and it instead kills you, you can just say, oh, uh, DM, hold on, hold on. You killed me. You dropped me to zero. It's my turn again. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and then start swinging away again. It's not enough. Uh, David, what do you think? What's uh, what's the feat, maneuver, et cetera? that you seem to like the most out of any of these fighters we've discussed? Well, I love playing champion, and what I like is the additional fighting styles. I mean, you can you get to choose uh, two, actually, uh, when, you, when you first begin, right? Or something like that? Level? You choose one, and then at level 10, you choose a second one. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, they're very versatile. And man, when you start adding feats to these guys, I mean, you know, heavy, you know, heavy armor master, great weapons master, you know, shooter. Yeah. Shield master. You know, it just, it gets ridiculous. You know, there's genius in its simplicity. I mean, you know, I mean, yes. Uh, new players, please try the fighter give it a give it a go i mean you're not going to be disappointed i will say if you do play the fighter as a more uh, uh seasoned veteran or maybe you don't want to just roll dice it really helps and i found <laughs> this out. what game are you playing uh, calm down calm down calm down go, go uh, play poker for god's sake <laughs> i like the chips too you know that frank anyway it's true um <laughs> Let them fall where they're. What are. I found with Dewey Docamel as a barbarian, as a melee uh, uh, class, was that if I, instead of saying, well, I rolled a hit, I rolled a hit, I say, well, I'm going to bury this uh, dagger into his Achilles tendon and then swing up like that. And all of a sudden, I'm enjoying a melee class more because I'm imagining what I'm trying to do as the fighter. I'm describing every attack, I'm duh, and then I roll the dice, whether I'm successful or not. And that really does help to make it more enjoyable. Um, the other thing I have to add, I'm sorry, David, if I was interrupting. No, you, no, go right ahead. You, I don't remember, um, was that this is also one of those classes um, that homebrews very well. Um, it, I think, has the most subclasses of any fighter and that's official and semi Matthew Mercer official that's coming out. Uh, but then on top of that, every single third party is going to have at least a dozen fighters. There's always the cool new weapons that your fighter can use. Um, so even if you play the game for 10 years, come back to it, you can come back to a fighter and still say something brand spanking new. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, other feature that I like, you got an arsenal. Yes. Every weapon in the book is is available to you. So, including the gun. <laughs> I believe it's any pole arm, any blade, any axe, and any member of your party that you can pick up and throw. And throw. <laughs> <laughs> because there's just nothing better than throwing that gnomish illusionist right through a fucking horde of orcs <laughs> i feel like you're picking on someone in particular with that comment but i don't know what you're talking about it's know. not, <laughs> it's not mortimer me? j sneed <laughs> uh yeah i i really like the fighter and i like the versatility uh i like the different maneuvers you can pick up uh for me because i don't study them religiously uh as i used to i mean honestly uh Kyle can tell you damn near anything about any class. Uh, I, and I, I can do that in 2E. I can't do that in 5E. But I, for me, I like playing the fighters. And I also like playing the bards. Because if I can kill you with being mean verbally, God, that's just awesome. <laughs> we'll discuss bards at a different time. Oh, hey, hey. And let's talk about this. Fighters, take the magic initiate feat, and you can kill people with your words too. That is true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Eldritch Knight can take vicious mockery, can't they? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, you know, I think we all know which direction head wound Larry's going. <laughs> <laughs> because I do enjoy insulting. Uh, folks, uh, <laughs> time just flies by when we do this. Uh, mm -hmm. We've given you the options. We're going to continue to give you some more options. Uh, honestly, I, I think all three of us are in agreement. If you're starting out new, uh, take the Conan, uh, take uh, the Princess Bride, take Anito Montoya, uh, take Sinbad the Sailor. They're Lord all fighters. Rings. What? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, you'd be halfling fighter there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're great. They are. Hey, they're the <laughs> one. They don't roll ones. I hate that feat about them. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're if you're starting out new to D and D, try the fighter. They're easy to pick up, but they can get really complicated, which is a good thing. It's nice to have your options. Uh, and we'll go ahead and discuss some of the other classes that you can do. Go ahead, Kyle. 
we were debating whether talking about this subject or another subject tonight. Let's take 10 extra minutes. I love putting five it over. Five to 10 minutes, if at all possible. Go ahead, go one ahead. Class, okay. One shot. And you know what? And I wanted to I was going to gonna bring that, that up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. go ahead and explain that, uh, that scope of work that we're working on. So the one class, one shot uh, is a one shot that features one class. Now, it can be simple, like with four fighters, which we can talk about in here in just a second, or it can be something a little bit more complicated where you have four wizards. Um, ideally, everyone takes a different subclass to cover their bases. Um, the wizards usually die against the, uh, the fuzzy little mushroom character that kind of looks like Kirby, just <laughs> beats the living tar out of them. Uh, uh, but the fighters end up standing a chance. So I wanted to ask you guys, with your all-fighter party one-shot, um, just where would you go with that? What are the classes, the, the party's weaknesses? What are their strengths? Well, yeah, strengths, weaknesses, and what kind of adventure would you go with a group of at least four fighters, all a different subclass? Starting with Frank, because he can think on his toes a little bit better than David. Uh, but we will have David run this one shot in the future. Go. Uh, strengths are certainly the ability to deal out martial damage. These guys are the tanks, and they're going to kick the shit out of damn near anything they can. Weakness. They're usually, they're, they usually have a dump stat in wisdom or intelligence, and anything trap-related or getting spells cast at them usually will stand a better chance of succeeding and rendering them a big pile of dung on the dungeon floor. What would I do? Well, as a DM, I want to make sure that everybody's having fun, so I'd give them something reasonable to go ahead and attack. Uh, you can't make it too soft because they'll just tear right through it. Uh, and you can't make it overly tricky, otherwise they're all morons. Uh, so you should avoid the cursed baby doll aspect, just no. saying. I would go with <laughs> a uh, straight up dungeon with a few traps and a big bat at the end uh, so that they can get their bloodlust out of the way. Uh, but I would have to include at least a trap or two just to uh, harsh their buzz on their ability to wreck everything it will also slow them down it will make them consider options and when they choke on a medium-sized roll and you say uh no everything looks fine they can shit their <laughs> pants and worry <laughs> about it uh my big bads are always uh owlbears because owlbears fuck shit up <laughs> before they hit. Uh, so that would be mine. I would do a short wilderness adventure into a dungeon. Maybe a bone naga because they can screw you with the spells. That's my two cents. All right. Uh, down to you, David. Um, strengths is beating stuff up. Weaknesses, having spells cast on them, getting the intelligence, wisdom, or charisma affected by them. Oh, yeah. Why does David sound like Kyle? <laughs> I'm wondering hey, if, he, he's, he's saying this for me so uh, yeah i figured if you want to add something to your strength and weakness pile there feel free to but how would you design a one shot for a group of fighters uh a one shot for a group of fighters uh i would try to keep it as simple as possible i'm the lazy dm so <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh straightforward lots of things to beat up you know i'd be generous with that but i think the big bad at the end would probably lock them down with things that force you know um intelligence checks you know wisdom checks things like that so yeah uh traps i mean definitely work because in kyle's uh episode that that he dm'd recently and all that i mean <laughs> Maybe episode 100, we aren't really sure. We're not really episode sure 99. about that. It could be. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the trap really slowed us down. But, I mean, I triggered the trap, fell in it. I had enough hit points. I was just like, oh, I'm going to pull myself off that spike. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, I mean, uh, pitfalls and a big bad would probably be the most, but lots of things to beat up, so it would be fun. Yeah, lots of role playing would be what? Yeah. Fuck talking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hit the high and low points. Let yeah. me give you guys this idea. What's that? Saving Private Ryan one shot. Nice. I like nice. that. You have to yeah. run across a field and you have to move fast, so you got to use your action surge to sprint across before an arcane archer maybe snipes you from a tower. Plenty mm -hmm. of mines, and you're just kind of relentlessly. Mimes? Mimes? Mimes, that's right. <laughs> I'm in a box. <laughs> the fighters can't see the wall in front of them, man. <laughs> Oh man! I, I, a fan, I like the fantasmal Ryan. force used on a fighter. Oh my god, that would be awful. You know, <laughs> but you, you know, if you're gonna constantly snipe your players, they're gonna go total ape shit bloodlust when they finally catch that assassin. As you should with every single sniper. <laughs> Cut yeah. their head off. Wear it as a helmet. Travel across the country and call yourself Garland Green. That's a fighter right there. <laughs> Guys, this has been murder hobos between the roles. Uh, oh, man. Uh, final thoughts? Or you got something else for us? Because yeah. honestly, folks, uh, they're, right now they're trying to get me to do a one class, one shot of the princess class, which are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding? But if we do it, Kyle has to be a dwarven princess. <laughs> I'll let my wife do my makeup too. Oh I will wear a dress. I will buy pretty, pretty princess or find my sister who has the game. I think tiara ring, all that. Go to Goodwill. I don't think it's something there yeah. anymore. Because you know, now that prom season's gone, you guys should be able to find dresses on the cheap. Yeah. I go oh, with boy. chiffon because it has a better <laughs> AC. I think. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts. Uh, we started with David. We'll end with Kyle. Kyle, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. Fighter. Play one. They're amazing. They're great. Uh, versatile. That's really all I have to say. David, final thoughts. Ditto. <laughs> there you go. It doesn't get any simpler than that unless you are an actual fighter that says... If intelligence oh. was my dump stat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh how about a weak fighter? There, there's your challenge. Give oh. me a fighter whose dump stat is strength. Okay, oh. done. Uh, this is your fighter who has the magic initiate feat. He's going to be a variant human. He's going to take shillelagh, so wisdom is going to be his highest stat. <laughs> then dexterity, then con. Con! Oh. Fights <laughs> with a toy wooden sword. Oh my god. God. My god. Dropped. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls, our stab at a talk show. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool stuff, uh, tinyurl.com, RPG swag. Shit's on sale this week. Just saying. Shit's on sale this week. If you want a seat uh, at one of the one shots this week, uh, give us a shout. We will try and get you in. We still have some room left. Uh, mm -hmm. They do fill the up. Princess shot. Not for yeah, we've got to figure out when we're doing the princess one shot. God, that's I fucking hate this. Uh, but <laughs> folks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching us. Uh, if you have any feedback, go ahead and let us know. And don't forget, you can always chat with us uh, like we're some kind of fucking rock stars, which we are not. We're regular human beings. Uh, Tinyurl.com, M Hobo Inc. Discord. Join the Discord channel and see. Beaverhausen's House of Beavers. <laughs> Christ. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thank you very much. Don't forget to wash your hands because the virus is still out there. It's not going anywhere. We will see you on probably Thursday. Thanks, everybody. Uh... Thank you for watching MHITV. This concludes our broadcast. <laughs>